Hawk's tracking something over here. Chris, yeah, what? It's gun. What is it? Everybody else moved all their hog traps out of here like two months ago because since November, no hogs are through here. Everybody removed all their traps and moved them onto other leases. So when the hogs get here, we go after them. What about Hawk? Hawk. Hawk. Six, seven, eight, yeah. Heard them squealing. Came back around, grabbed the guns, tried to head them off. These creeks swirled back and forth. So uh, we kind of took a shortcut. We're moving back and through the creek, trying to intercept them, stop them for a moment. Even as we're hunting, come up underneath a big mulberry tree. So you forage as you go, but uh, it's time to get some pork, man. We were gonna go find another fish camp, but pigs came. You follow the food where it comes. I'm hungry. I really need more food. Bacon sounds good. Oh man. Canadian bacon. It's too bad we weren't set. Canadian bacon. I'll give you some Canadian bacon. <laughs> <laughs> These creeks swirl back and forth, so if they're right here coming around, we jump over. We're trying to intercept them right now. So we're stalking through the creek banks, picking mulberries as we go, being real quiet. Hoping to come across these guys. It's midday. They should be underneath this tree canopy. They shouldn't be out there out of uh, out of ground cover really. It's freaking hot. We're out of water here in a little while, but wish us luck. We gotta catch up to these pigs. We've been tracking them for a long time up here. We're just we cut around and went back around the other side now. So they were coming toward us. We're just following a creek bottom on this side here. So we've gone around the opposite side to cut them off. We just found a, a massive mother load of mulberries. Mulberries everywhere. All up here, it's a huge tree. Look at that trunk. This trunk is huge. Look at it, it's huge. It's the uh, size of my body. Yeah. Huge mulberry tree. And there's not a, one mulberry on the ground. All up in the tree. So those pigs came through here for sure. And cleaned this whole area out. So we're on the right track, man. So I'm not sure if y'all can see this, but all the way around this 360, nothing but down wood. And this is where the wood burring beetles come in and destroyed uh, the last trees available. The big ones, you know, five foot in diameter trees, they're long gone, seven, eight years ago. And they're just finishing off all these medium guys. So they all fall over at the same time because they all died around the same time. And everybody talking about um, burning too much wood in my campfires and stuff like this. Check it out, devastation. I guess the whole trip wasn't for nothing. I did find a shed antler. It's pretty neat. Little buck. Take that back to camp. It's a good digging stick and tool making item. Running around chasing these hogs around. So anyway, they're Sean and Bob were up the way. Um, I guess scouting. What were you guys scouting for? Anyway? Scouting for more mulberry trees. Yeah, we found yeah. we found that. We were only a hundred yards up. So maybe maybe. <clears throat> the pigs would have came right into camp, but we were not prepared for that. No. Anyway, um, we're not, we didn't have hog on the mind yet. Yeah, uh, no. yeah, now, now it's on the menu, but yeah, we just went on a three hour journey. But I got to see more of the property, which was nice. Uh, piles of mulberries everywhere. Uh, we saw a nice snake swimming in the water. That was kind of cool. Uh, I found an antler shed. That was neat from a, from a deer. Ah, oh, geez, what else did we see? A wolf. Oh yeah, a little coyote. No, not little. No? Big. <laughs> I gotta show you mine. 
we, mm. we got bigger than that. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> My meal has kind of been sitting out in the flies in 30 degrees, but at least it's cooled off now. So I can pretty much eat the whole. That's a big chunk of possum skin. So that's going to be awesome possum. Hmm. That's a little bit of a mouthful. You can put any seasoning in the possum at all. It's pretty good. So, so far we're eating leftovers today. I got a turtle on the menu. And we still haven't even made it to our second camp for fish, which was the original plan. So we've been derailed. Hey man, I'm stuffed. Oh, that maybe. A uh, little bit of shake left in there. A little bit of sip -a sip -a. Uh, This stuff does not go far, man, as far as food. It's day four, right? So I'm uh, gotta stay on my calories. Um, we got one more full day tomorrow. Now you guys, I showed this on season two of the Wilderness Living Challenge. It's, that's a good season two. <laughs> good season as well. Get some of the calories coming back. I could really use some more mulberries. Um, but there's a paw in here. And Bob mentioned something about the paw. It being weird that there's a paw in there, but he's, he's really starting to get over the fact that, you know, there's these weird things going on in your soup. So there's a, you know, there's a couple fingers in there and the pad and everything. Uh, when you're living off the land, you get all the nutrients you need from the animals because you eat all the parts of the animals, including the eyes and the brain. And I don't know if Bob noticed, but I put the possum head in there. So we basically ate the brain. Um, and, but we talked about, you know, the prions and all that stuff. And the, the prions can be found anywhere in the spinal column. So the spinal column goes in your food. You're eating the brain anyway. It's all part of the same system, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Another thing, you might be hearing a lot of flies right here. I don't know, they're landing everywhere, but we've been here so long and we've thrown so many parts all over the place of various different things and little food bits that they're they're really starting to attract them. Which is actually a little bit off-putting. If anything, they land on everything now. I just let you guys know about, you know, the, the fact that food is food and we're not wasting anything in order to get the calories, you got to eat the whole thing. Hard to get the nutrients from just the land and itself you know wild edibles is as far as i'm concerned fairly overrated you gotta have both to make it that's how our ancestors did all right guys so i turned the camera off and on like ten thousand times i keep forgetting why i'm turning it on so i've got some um cactus it's a cactus fruit it's last year's fruit so it's already it's turned red and ripe now uh, when they're on the cactus itself, I've shown this before in earlier videos, you're gonna have to go check it out. But uh, the green in the first season, you now you can eat the inside of it. I don't really have a, a good one to show. This one's kind of rotted, but uh, you can peel it back so, and you can get the right fruit out. I'm not gonna eat the rotted part. The seed is actually rotted, but I probably could eat that. There's a a red flesh part here. That's edible. The inside flesh has actually turned brown, so it's spoiled. But it tastes like um, an unripe kiwi. So it doesn't have a ton of sugar in it. But I'm gonna grab it. This one's kind of interesting. I just cut it open. And I smelt it and it smells like beer. So if you find a fruit and it smells like beer, it's probably fermented, right? So I'm not gonna pass up, you know, a free shot of booze. Tastes like beer, man. It's not all that bad. I'm not a big beer drinker. I'm not a big alcohol drinker, but you know what? This probably make me feel pretty good because I haven't had alcohol in about two years. Three years, maybe. Yep, that one's fermented too. You might think it's bad to feel drunk out here, or to get drunk out here, but 
being low calorie, you're drunk anyway. For the most part, you start acting drunk when you're low sugar. Most fermented fruit are good. So nature's alcohol. These seeds are a little bit brown on the top. So I'm gonna eat the lower part and do the sniff test. It smells a little bit, a little bit moldy. Tastes okay. A little bit moldy, but tastes okay. I think most people probably would just throw this away. But this is a wilderness living challenge. And we're trying to make our calories back from food from the wild. So we stretch everything we can. We've got one more. This one's really tiny. It's like shriveled up. It's got a really funny shape. All right, guys, if you just joined me, it's a four wilderness living challenge. We're knocking it out. I'm gonna finish up the rest of my possum, awesome possum leftover. <sighs> Gotta think about getting our set lines out for a big gar. What's gonna happen? Uh. Cheers. Uh. I'm stuffed. I think all the fingers and toes are in this scoop. Also, also vertebrae. Piece of the spinal column. That's a toe. The finger. The rest are just going to be fingers and toes. So I'll get, get the good stuff out. Cheers, guys. Any chance you get when your body says, okay, it's time to do a BM, take it. Because there's a window of opportunity when it comes to wilderness living. When your body's gonna be like, okay, now you can go. And then maybe three or four hours later, you don't eat any food. Your body's gonna be like, all right, we're gonna go on energy conservation mode and we're gonna suck up all the nutrients out of that and so good luck getting that out. And when you're not balancing all your meals properly, as far as fibers, proteins, fats, you're gonna have problems because things are gonna dry out real fast if you catch my drift. So nature's calling and I'm gonna answer. Oh, sorry, I almost forgot. When you go do a BM in Texas, make sure you don't step on a snake, a scorpion, or a spider, or sit on a thorn patch, because they're all gonna get you. They're all out to get you. As Bob would say, there's hate everywhere. You gotta burn the hate off, or in this case, don't sit on it at least. We got touchdown, that's good. It's always good, man. Thing is, this is my third one today. The interesting part is that, you know, they're spaced out three or four hours apart. But more interesting than that is when it looks like a wild animal left it. So we think about that. We're eating the same foods as wild animals, so naturally, it's gonna look like a wild animal left it. Curious.
it's hard to convey just how many mulberries are here. They're scattered all over the ground. There's, in fact, way more on the ground than anybody could possibly eat. And they're scattered all throughout the property. There's a huge boom right now. So that's the crop to be on, is the mulberries. Now, it'd be nice to just collect all of them, but you know, about three pounds is about all you can do. But you can put some pounds of mulberries down. I've tried it and I've done it. I think the most I've done in one day is probably, and on my fourth day right now, uh, I think I did four pounds one day, four pounds of mulberries. I have to figure out how many calories are in four pounds of mulberries. You guys figure it out. I don't know. Such an interesting place out here. Like, you know, if I go back home at this time of year, all this greenery is not here. And they're in like the full thick of it right now. There's animals everywhere. Birds flying everywhere. There's productivity everywhere. It's like, there's everything here. Just fruit everywhere, resources everywhere. It's pretty impressive. Now this, my friends, is a very big, heavy trap that we've had set up over here for hogs. But since the hogs aren't coming here, we need to haul this way off in the jungle where there aren't really any trails. About 10, 15 minute walk up the riverbank under a mulberry bush. So we're gonna ratchet strap him down, whip him over the fences, and drag them all the way up will increase our chances of catching ourselves a hog. Hog a la carte. Hog a la carte. <laughs> there we go. Almost there. So there are 200 yards to go. All right, guys. When we weigh out tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow, and uh, we come up short because we're chasing the hog around, dragging this trap. Jeez. I'm not functioning right. I'm hungry. So when we weigh out next time, and uh, you're surprised that we lost weight because all we did was eat food. The entire challenge, we didn't just eat food. We just filmed us eating food and our successes. You have to actually go through this big area where all the trees are damaged. So it's not an easy job, but uh, we had this hog trap set for uh, four days now and we've got nothing in it. So we got to try something new. Next time I decide to go shed hunting, I'm just gonna fly to Texas. I'm, a, I'm like two for two, just walking around finding sheds. Can't find these easily back home. Uh, that was about, I don't know, 20 minutes of hard slog. Almost like, you know, taking a wheelbarrow through the woods. A bit heavier than a wheelbarrow. All right, so we're here. There's a mulberry bush behind us. It's uh, been cleaned out the bottom and there's uh, some wallowing sign. That's a term for pigs wallowing in water, hanging out in water. I should use a different word when I explain the term. Uh, today's been an interesting day. I don't think we collect, did we collect any new food? We didn't catch anything though. Not a thing. Not a calorie, we ate leftovers and we're gonna go back after this and eat our leftovers. We got a possum, live possum that we've Managed to keep alive humanely, obviously, uh, and we are going to uh, eat that one and uh, whatever leftovers we have. But we got to set this trap up first, and hopefully it's going to pay out. But if we left it up there, it's not going to work for sure. Let's get this guy down by the under the mulberry tree. You good? Threw my shed in here and Bob says grab your shed. It sounds like you bait. 
<laughs> Hunter bait. What are you gonna do back there? <laughs> could tink. It could tink. All right, so here's my shed. Now, I've never seen a big trap like, well, I actually do kind of have a big trap like that, not quite this big, but it's, uh, it functions pretty much the same. They're all kind of the same. This one's got a latch back here. All you do is pick it up. Once, it, once it's down, it's locked, but if you pick these bars up, unlocks it. There's a mechanism back here that you pull forward, lock it in. It's pretty straightforward, not rocket science. And uh, we're gonna use corn. And Bob's just gonna beat it now. The dog food and corn? Yep. Now, on the Windless Living Challenge, it would be considered cheating to eat it, but for some reason, I don't find it cheating to bait with it. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just like, you gotta get started somehow, and you don't have any food, and you're struggling for food all the time, you gotta have some bait. So, this goes in the back of the trap, and then once the animal goes in, it hits the back of the, the foot pedal, and uh, down the, goes the door, and in goes the animal. The corn's always a special treat. Oh, Something they can't get all the year round, unless you get it from a feeder. Started off the day checking lines. Uh, we had a turtle on there, so we ate turtle today. Um, this morning, we thankfully had a lot of leftover foods, so we were able to eat a pretty good meal at breakfast time. And then since breakfast, we really haven't eaten all day. And that's uh, maybe a difficult fact to understand, but we were going to go move fish camps. That was the first plan. It didn't pan out. There was no place to set up over here on the riverfront. Um, and then we decided we were gonna go check a different property altogether. So we went over there, talked to the landowner, scouted it out, it looked good, but the problem is all our gear is still here. So we didn't have time to do that. So the next plan besides that was to move that hog trap over. Uh, so we just did that. So right now I'm eating actually the um, uh, pheasant, uh, not pheasant, the uh, peacock hen. Um, yeah, so the peacock hen here, we have turtle, we have a reserve uh, bit of possum, and we just, uh, we have a live trap possum still. We didn't catch any new animals today or fish, period. Everything, all our resources completely dried up. So I'm eating, this has been on the coals all day long, kind of doing its thing but it's getting real long, real old in the tooth. I'm gonna eat as much as I can right now at dusk. I'm burning calories today, not adding any new. I did weigh in this morning and I, you may believe me, you may not believe me, but I was only down one pound today from my initial start weight uh, on day one. So that's, you know, three days, I, let's say, uh, because today doesn't count till tomorrow morning. So that's three days and I lost one pound. So that's a pretty good uh, amount. Now, if we just stick to the, you know, get the possum in and, and cook that, if I could singe it, but uh, I don't think I'll be singeing it, so we might stew it up. But this lean meat doesn't do nothing for you, man. Two hours later, two, three hours later, you're hungry. I can't even eat that meat. I'm just gonna drink mostly the broth and some of the dark meat if I can find it. The bone marrow is all, bone, all leached out by now, so it should be better off. Twilight's setting in. Bob's out there coy coyote calling. Doing a little bit on the video there. And then we're walking around camp and I actually noticed that we had some some of these dynamites that we collected a couple days ago that we've been hanging on to. Um, well, you know, I'm gonna actually eat these. I don't want to. I don't like them that much because uh, of the glaucids. These are cactus pods, the cactus pods. But uh, I'm drinking that broth like mad and it's doing absolutely nothing because it's mostly just liquid water. So I'm going to have to try to filter all that out of me. Filter that, um, the fat that might be collected in the broth out of it. Pee out the rest. Um, otherwise I could just let it cool off overnight and then eat the fat. But I'm going to go a bit hungry. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some time and build this fire up and eat these in the dark. It's the only recourse I have. I'd love to go berry picking or something and get a pound of berries. That would be nice. But it's not happening right now, so and I'm starving. I can't do this all day running around without eating. So I gotta build a little fire and get these rocking. Kinda do wish I had my saw here. But uh, I gotta build the fire up in the flame in order to properly burn the glockids off the cactus. So 
Got to build the fire back up. No free calories out here, man. None. I don't know if you guys can see any of this, but we're still here. I'm just spreading the, the cactus pods out. I find that <laughs> if you ever find yourself in a situation with all you got is cactus pods, <laughs> you make your shish kebabs. And if you don't know how to do that, you got to go back to the start and watch. But uh, if you just spread them out, then they, the little spines, the glaucids, getting the terminology to you now, I'm actually teaching you things. It's amazing what living off the land for four days can do to a person. So all I'm doing is spreading them out so that uh, those spines will burn off a little easier. The flame will touch it. And you need a flame, you can't just use heat. You have to actually burn them or they're going to come back and haunt you. So I'll throw these on the fire here. They should burn up instantly and then all you have to do is cook them for an eternity or 20 or 30 minutes or longer. And they bake and they turn into something that's not quite a baked potato, but I was promised baked potato flavor. To me it tastes more like green bean or um, milkweed pod, which I don't like. But I'm going to eat my least preferred food because that's all I have. It's like a marshmallow with all the out all the goodness in them. So this is our last possum. This is actually possum number two uh, during the whole series. And we were keeping it kind of as a last resort, but it's now first resort because it's all we got. It was uh, one of those things we, were keep, we kept uh, humanely in a trap just in case. So Bob's just cleaning it up now. Hi guys, pretty late now. Um, can't eat that. Any of the lean protein I can no longer eat. I can drink the broth. So I probably had 10 cups of the straight up broth from our bird that we took a couple years, uh, a couple years ago, a couple days ago. Can't eat the lean stuff. So I've been actually putting it over in the live trap. Hopefully something else can appreciate it for tomorrow. Um, we've got all our cactus thingamajiggers all finished so I'm gonna do my best to eat all of those completely. Bob, <laughs> how you feeling? You gonna eat anything? Conserving energy right now. Yeah. Yeah I've got probably close to a half gallon worth of mulberries that I'm gonna pack away right before I go to bed. So I did pretty good with two berries and mulberries on the way to try and find that fishing spot that well, one didn't pan out, but another one will. Yeah. So, you know, scout a little bit, find a little bit. But you can't live off of berries forever. No, that's true. So, kind of wanted to, I wanted to point out that because I've done the Wilderness Living Challenge before and I have the excess, last season we didn't have a lot of time to eat our excess foods. This year I'm taking maximal advantage of absolutely everything in front of me. And if if it comes to the point where we kind of net out differently, it'll be because um, Bob's not drinking <laughs> and eating what we got, which is the turkey stuff here. <laughs> yeah. He's chilling out, um, which is entirely up to him. But uh, I, the broth's there if you want to have some. I did, I made some um, cactus pods. <laughs> If you want to have some of those pods. I eat the heck out of those a lot more than you do, huh? Yeah, you do like those. Yeah, so I do. You can go ahead and have some of those. Those are all ready to go. Uh, we have turtle soup left. That's it. We have a couple. We have maybe one little bowl of that left, but it's mostly lean protein at this point. And that's basically what I'm eating is the lean protein I can swallow plus the broth. And I'm going to pack up. There's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's say 30 of those. Are you going to have any? Yeah, I think so, man. You have some of those. Yeah. All right. We ate, what, two turtles a day just about? Two turtles. Started out with <clears throat> three bowls of broth yeah. and chicken, green Ch chicken green this morning. Chicken. Yeah, that's it. And then a heck of a lot of berries. Yeah. Kind of going to, got a few more layers of fat on me right now. Hmm. I'm going to key in on those catfish hopefully tomorrow. Well, yeah. Counting on catfish. 
So by layers of fat, are you trying to net out? Or are you trying to lose, are you trying to get in shape? Yeah, different goals. I'm transforming, man. So for Bob, if he if he loses a little bit of weight, you're not I'm gonna still on track with what I'm trying to do. Right, that's that's what he's trying to do. So yeah. my goal is different. Yeah, our our goals are different. I gotta maintain. If I don't maintain, then I'll lose what I'll lose the good stuff that I already have. Right. I'm rebuilding. So I I do want to point that out if there happens to be a net difference in way outs is part of it is strategy based and my strategy is just to pack every single food item i can into my body as much as possible uh it makes i may still not net out um because of the amount of work we've been doing it's, depends on what we pull in tomorrow man yeah if we can hammer it out tomorrow and and if we get a big boon animal tomorrow or a bunch of catfish or an alligator all the gar or something like that it could change it could change everything then we just have to eat it for a day or two at camp and i'll push it another an extra day to net out all right that's it for now just wanted to point out that I, i've been drinking 10 cups and peeing about the same so i'm hoping there's some calories in that meal all right guys good night So this is a bit of a gag. I had a hairdresser friend, his name's Ty. He does my wife's hair. He gave me this brush after he saw season two of the Wilderness Living Challenge and he noticed my brush had lots of hair stuck in it. How about that? Completely hair free. Hygiene's important when you're living off the land. You never know if you might run into some ladies. There we go, just like that. Hey guys, I'm back in Canada and I've been doing a pile of editing. I wanna keep this video series rolling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release a video every Tuesday and every Friday. This is gonna be going on for about two and a half months. I have 19 episodes in total. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is support the channel. What I want you to do, if you can, is please watch the video entirely from the beginning right to the end. YouTube is tracking all sorts of uh, data in their algorithm and what they wanna see is a high watch time or retention time. So if you guys can do that, you like the series, you want me to continue doing that, that's one small way you guys can help. Leave lots of comments down on the bottom, not just one, but a bunch of them, that helps. Of course, hitting the like button is super easy. You can do that too. And sharing it. If everybody shared it to five people, it would get big really fast. And lastly, if you want to support it monetarily, you can buy a t-shirt. I'm hoping to get some more t-shirts up. If the t-shirts are available, I'll provide a link. If not, you can always offer a PayPal donation that will come directly through me. To me, you can also hit the sponsorship button. It's a new uh, feature that YouTube has added. You click sponsor and it's a monthly uh, subscription. So I think it's $5.95 or something like that. And uh, ongoing supports the channel. So guys, I hope you enjoy the series. Um, if you guys want me to continue doing this, you want me to go to other different places, uh, let me know. If you have access to land, um, you know, private land, and there's a lot of hunting, fishing, opportunities, trapping, that sort of things, and you want to invite me up and a guest or a couple, a couple guests, let me know. Shoot me an email for that. I do not always get to all the comments to do my best, but if it's, a, uh, if it's an important thing like, hey, you want to uh, hook me up with some land and you've got it ready to go, let me know. So uh, I'd like to explore and open different doors and avenues and see where this, uh, this YouTube thing and the survival wilderness living thing takes me. So I would definitely let, welcome some, uh, some offers of getting into new lands all over the world. So let me know.